Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. Yesterday I did a video on Wargaming's announcement that some upcoming balance adjustments are going to be made that will be focused on Tier 10. Now in that video I looked at those tanks that Wargaming had specified, although they did say that the majority of Tier 10 will be adjusted. Today I want to look at one specific tank, that of the E50M, mainly because no doubt, like me, a lot of you are sat there scratching your heads, wondering why on earth the E50M is being tinkered with. I mean, surely it's a pretty well balanced tank as it is. In order to try and understand Wargaming's thinking process behind this tinkering of the E50M, we need to firstly look at what Wargaming's overall goals are. Now Wargaming themselves have said that the ultimate goal is essentially three parts. One, to tune the vehicles in order to make them have a clear strength, making the tank efficient in certain circumstances and clear weaknesses, which will let others counter the tank. Number two, to vary the tanks within the same class and to make them differ more. And number three, to bring new experiences since some tanks will be played differently. Now it's probably fair to say that in respect to the E50 Ebb on the first two points, well they're really the only ones that apply here. But why is that? Well there are basically two tanks sitting in the tech tree on the German line. Now, I've got four there because I've also got the T62A and the object. But if you look at the E50 M and the Leo one, the Leo one is a better tank on paper. It's got better DPM, better penetration, better rate of fire, better reload. Okay, it has not as good aim time and it has better speed and everything else. Now, they're two different tanks, okay? On paper, as I said, the Leo one outperforms the E50M despite having the same gun. We already showed you that the DPM for one is better along with its penetration. However, whilst both are mediums, both have totally different styles of play. The Leo one is lighter, less armoured, which accounts for its improved mobility to that of the E50M. The Leo also needs additional benefits, like its load time, like its DPM, speed and such, purely because of that lack of armour. Now, a lack of armour is a serious issue, and those of you who have played against a Leo one or played in a Leo one, a wow time to HE round will spoil any Leo 1 driver's day. By contrast, the E50M has what the Leo 1 lacks, armor, and a lot of armor. The E50M is also a ram machine. I mean, try ramming in the Leo 1, and well, whilst you'll cause some damage, you'll most likely come off worse. That's not always the case with the E50M. Now you're seeing here in Armor Inspector, an E50M facing off against a VK. You know, look at this side scraping ability. It, 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 it has got the ability, but that turret is pretty solid. By contrast, look at the Leo. I mean, the Leo is, well, you know, it's just a pen magnet. And that is the thing. They are different tanks already. Look at that Leo one. I mean, at the end of the day, why would you want to tinker realistically with a tank that, well, it already is different, it, and it is already different to the tank that we've got. It, it, it's not like they're exactly the same, despite having the same gun. Again, it seems that, I don't know here, there's, there's got to be a reason, there's always got to be a reason. I mean, this is an E50 gameplay. The E50M seems to have clear strengths and weaknesses. So goal one of Wargaming's plan is already complete. It clearly varies in the playstyle to the Leo one, which was goal two. Vary the tanks in the same class because these tanks already vary significantly enough to set them apart. Surely it cannot be to bring new experiences. I mean, the Leo one and the E50M is not the Object 114T62A. They are markedly different already, and therefore they already bring new experiences. So why, oh why, is Wargaming tinkering here? Now it's even more confusing when we look at what is being changed. 
Basically, the first big change is the APCR standard ammo is changed to AP, which actually mirrors that of the Object 140 in a lot of respects. I mean, the Object 140 differs from the T62A ammo loadout wise exactly the same way. Now, obviously, changing the ammo from APCR to AP entails a reduction in damage, which is planned. Again, the T62A, by contrast, dishes out 350 to the Object 140's 310. However, they've said that DPM will increase, so no doubt the reload times will get some kind of a buff. Thing is, if you buff the reload times, then you're venturing back into Leo 1 territory, because the Leo 1 already has a better reload, that of 5.5 seconds, well, 5.7 seconds, compared to that of 6.3 of the E50M. I mean, great, DPM goes up, and so the reduced damage can be worked around. But AP normally has less penetration than APCR. So will that also be a factor here? I mean, Wargaming haven't mentioned that. Again, looking at the T62A and the Object 140, the penetration differs by five. The Object 140 having less pen on its AP than the T62A with its APCR. I mean, that will certainly set the E50M apart from the Leo, which already has a better penetration of 10 to that of the E50M. Does that now mean the E50M will have 15 less pen than the Leo? Who knows? Now the accuracy of the E50M is also set to change. Both the Leo 1 and the E50M are pretty accurate tanks already, with the E50M having a better aim time to that of the Leo 1. I mean the Leo 1 does have 1.8 seconds compared to that of the E50M's 1.7. Not massive, I agree, but it's enough. On the face of it, these proposed changes seem to be an attempt to bring a distinction like that between the, two, the, the T62A and the Object 140, the German meds. A distinction that I don't think is really needed here. As I said previously, these two German mediums are totally different playstyles, different strengths and certainly different weaknesses. So why go to the lengths of changing something along the lines of the set goals when they already satisfy those goals to begin with? Well. I have no idea, to be honest. And the only thing I can think of is that it's because Wargaming feels that a much clearer distinction is required. Alternatively, maybe, just maybe, it's because the E50M has a better win rate to that of the Leo 1. I mean, and it does. If I go back into Tank Compare, you will see this. You know, the, the win rate of the E50M is 56.23, the win rate of the Leo 1 is 53.44. You can see that the E50M outshines the Leo 1 in almost every parameter apart from average spots. And more players are playing it. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe Wargaming want to get more people into that Leo 1. Or maybe they just want to bring the Leo 1 up to the standard currently enjoyed by the E50M. Obviously, that's merely speculation on my part because I can't immediately see why the E50M requires a rebalance other than that. I mean, maybe you guys can see something that I can't. Maybe there is method in Wargaming's madness. Only time will tell, really. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been a quick look at why is the E50M being tinkered with in update 9.1? By all means, comment and everything below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me have your comments on this because I really can't see it myself. And there is clearly something there or else Wargaming wouldn't be doing it. Anyway guys, until the next time, stay safe on the battlefield, have fun out there, and happy tanking, because that is what it's all about at the end of the day. Having fun and being happy.